presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Oh my God. Of course, it happens on Friday. I take a bite and a chili, chili cheesesteak, which is steak with chicken, and my cheese broth. And um, yeah, it's, how do you do it, my man? Oh, is that be on Friday or Saturday? Hey, I went. Finally, got a room for today. Took two hours. They got it done. It's a temporary. And he informed me, and I really love this guy and his wife, that I have a collapsed bite. I also know it's a green bite because I'm old and stuff. And it, it's true. I mean, when I close my mouth, these are sheared off. It's a problem. 25 to 30,000 dollars, people. Oh my God. I told my husband, I can go to Guadalajara for 3,000. And he said, absolutely not. So, anyway, it's not going to be pretty. But that's not what we're here for. Uh, well, you can share your dental woes if you like. But right now, this is all about you guys, our caller, and Denise Fong, um, uh, healer. Um, <laughs> me and full ball of wax. So, um, hi, Eric. I love you. Do you want to say anything first to our lovely listeners? Hey, um. First of all, hi, everybody. And Eric says, hi, Mama. He goes, hi, and hi, everyone. He says, you know, this is a, a season about, he, he was telling me earlier, and he says, you know, this is about, um, he says, you know, and we can talk about whatever people want to talk about, but he says, you know, we get so attached to things that don't feel good. And he was saying, why don't we start grabbing on to things that do feel good yeah. and stay with that? And um, Like puppies. I'm sorry? Like puppies. Exactly. You know, he gave, Hold me on to a puppy. he gave me that analogy with somebody not too long ago about puppies and kittens. But, um, but he says, yeah. yeah, about grabbing on to something. He says, and you can just grab in the air, whatever it is. Start thinking about things that you want to hang on to instead of hanging on to the things that you don't want to hang on to. And when he was telling me that, I was like, duh, you know, like, because we do grab on to things. I know I grab on to things that I don't like and um, and I sit like there and ponder over it. Like what? A, a, a um, toxic friendship? A co-worker? Is it, are you talking about relationships? Or are we talking about anything? anything. Is Jerry's ice cream? Or what are we talking about? Anything. I sent my daughter an electric blanket because she's away at college and it was colder up there, you know, near Austin area. And she didn't respond the way I thought she would have responded that I sent her an electric blanket. Oh, for and, shame. Um, and, and so, you know, I was thinking, God, you know, she, you would think that she would be this or that, and 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 that's what I was thinking about. And Eric says, "Why don't you grab on to something, you know, that you want to hang on to instead of hanging on to the poor whatever, you know?" And, and that was what started the conversation between Eric and I. Interesting. So basically, it's like your daughter's like, "Are you trying to give me cancer?" No, I'm kidding. That's not. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it it does get disappointing when, so, you know, to me, I like just giving anonymously. I mean, I it just, I, I, I don't want to have expectations for anything from people. I just want to give, give, freaking give, and I don't want, I don't want expectations in return. It's too, because I'm human, and, and I'm going to interpret it, and I'm going to say, well, what the fuck? They didn't say thank you. I'd rather not. It's easier well, that way. It is. And Eric asked me, he said, who did you give the blanket to, Denise? And that was a, a real big, you know, aha, uh-huh. who was I getting it for? I was getting it for my comfort. For oh. Her. oh. Yeah, so he said, you know. Mm-hmm. That may- so where is she right now? In Texas where it's hot? Yes. Yeah. 
in San Marcos. Actually, it's going to be super cold coming out here, like 27 or something. It is cold, um, yeah, it's me. Yeah, so what else, Eric? You know, and he says, this is, he says, this is, he goes, you know, you heard it back where people said 2020 was really good because it's like 2020 eyesight or whatever. And he says, and it was a good year, but it's about how you choose to look through the lenses. And he said, but this year, 2022, uh-huh. he says, this is really a good year. And he says, you really don't have far to reach for, to look for, to see the good things and to start seeing them happening. And he says, they're there, he said. So reach for what feels good. He says, because this is this is a good year for many things. So usually, Eric, people um, come to this radio show because they're nudged, and perhaps they're nudged in this case because they're holding on to something they don't need to be holding on to. Can you just not name people, obviously, but just? Throw out there what some of these listeners are holding on to that they shouldn't. Specifically, what people didn't do for them. And he says one of the biggest things that we do is we hold on to that somebody didn't read our mind, knowing that we needed something or wanted something or or whatever you know, like because they didn't say this to us. He said we got to let go of. The, that people can read our minds because as tensely as we feel it, he says, that doesn't mean other people can. Well, I know that from a personal example, uh, experience rather, uh, you know, like my husband says, what do you want for your birthday? Oh, nothing. <laughs> and I go, okay, then I get nothing. And it's like, what the hell? What? What? I'm so sad. I, you, ha- you don't love me. It's like, you know, First of all, you've got to ask for what you want or don't have any expectations. But that is a typical typical saga between men and women. Um, what else, Eric? What, what is it, Specific people out there, um, can you name specific things that they are um, – that they? Well, Eric says they need to uh, – he says, that, he says, well, they don't need to do anything. But there are some out there that will get callers where fear is – stepping in their way and Eric says they need to shrink that fear down a little bit and really see what it really is what it's really saying because it it can look really huge but he says it's a matter of just doing it and not worrying about if you pass fail or color it wrong or read it wrong or somebody says you're dumb or whatever what's the most important is that you just ran through it you just go through it he says you know He's he's showing me everybody ought to go get a piece of wood, you know, not a thick piece, but everybody ought to go and get one and just whatever it is that they want to do, they need to just hit that piece of wood and, and watch how it splits. And wood splitting, Eric, because he's showing me how people, you know, do their hand and split the wood. And um, he says you hit it with your palm, not with the side of your hand. And he says everybody ought to just go out there and just, Right really? on that wood, right on that piece of wood, whatever it is they're wanting to do, but so afraid of just just see it and just holler what it is. Um, and I'm Eric just giving me this. I don't know for the rhythm, the how it sounds, but he's saying um, you holler jump rope, you know, whatever. And he's telling me, and then hit the that piece of wood. He goes. He says it's so empowering. He goes because then you visually see how you can do something, and you wow. have written on the the board jump rope, or you have on there apply for a job. Or um, he says a lot of people. He says are Good, coming up. I ain't, I ain't jumping rope, man. I'm not it. <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> God, I tried to do a somersault not that long ago. Oh, and I used to do it all the time. I just could not even get close to it. All right, anything else for specific people out there? Not naming names, but the people well, out there. Well, there are some people, people who want to be. He says name there are one some person, people. not some people, Eric. One person. Name, name well, one person. Well, he says person. there's someone that wants to be, you know, that has, that knows they have these abilities to be a medium slash healer but they're afraid to go out there and try it, you know, or to, to go forward with it, you know? And so they, 
they they stay in like a circle running around like what well, how do I do it what do I do and Eric says they just need to just jump through and just start practicing on their friends. Good. That sounds reasonable. Anything else, Eric? For anybody? Or the or the group? Eric says he says that's a, that's a good start though. What uh, he says because you know. That um, the fear is latched onto everything. So if we just, he says, if you True. get a piece of wood, he says, or if you can't get wood because your finances don't allow that, he says, get a piece of paper. And he says, and put it somewhere, you know, where you can do it and just put your hand through it or something. And um, um, he says, you know, there's there's things that we can do. And he says, you know. Um, if you can't even do that, he says, then get into a place, um, a quiet place, and visualize that happening and feel the force. Okay. Verbalize it when you're doing it. Okay, that makes sense. All right, sweetie, are you ready to call us? Yes. Both of you? Both my Eric sweetie? says yes. I was answering for Eric. He said yes, and yes for me. I love you, Eric, so much. Love he you. loves you. He loves you. <sighs> All right, uh, we got somebody from the three one zero. I mean, three two one. Way off. Three two one error code. Hi there. How you doing? How can we help you? And what is your first name and where you're calling from? Hello, are you there? Three two one error code. Hello, are you there? I guess not. Uh, oh, all right. Well, um, okay. I will unmute that person and go to the next one. And we'll try her, her or him again. Eight six um, zero. Eric, good. Hi there. How you doing? Are you there? Oh no, I didn't do it. It didn't work. Oops. Hi there. Eight six zero. Eric, good. How you doing? What's up? Hi, thank you so much. My name is Lisa from Connecticut. Hi, oh, Lisa from Connecticut. I remember you. What's up, girl? I'm just wondering um, if there are any messages from my angels or guides. Uh, Did you have have something particular you're wanting to know? Um, Is there anything good coming up for me? There I think you need, I feel like there's something specific you want to ask, Lisa. But go ahead. I'll, I'll honor what you want, obviously. Eric says there is good coming, but he says you've got, and Eric says this is what he's saying about reaching out and grabbing on what you want instead of, re, instead of grabbing on what you don't want. Because Eric is saying there is something good coming your way. And you have got to, Eric says, you've got to start writing about it talking about it, not to people. You can just talk about it to yourself when you're in the shower, cooking, washing dishes, cleaning, driving, whatever. But you got to start talking about that good that you want. He says, it's there. It's coming. And he says, there's a lot of loneliness in you right now. And Eric says, nurture that loneliness in you. He says, love that part of your loneliness. Don't hate it. He's saying, love that part of you. And like um, earlier uh, when Elisa said a puppy, Eric says, nurture that loneliness like you would nurture a little puppy or a kitten. Okay, so why is she lonely? Is she a star seed, an earth angel, light worker? Is there any anything like that explaining her loneliness? Because like, I'm that way too. I'm surrounded by people I love, but I feel lonely a lot. Eric says, well, Eric says she has, there's sadness going on with her. Mm. And, um, Lisa, we love you. I yeah, haven't seen, I haven't seen my only child in almost 12 years. He's oh, a grown adult. Make, no. Oh. So he took the rest of the family with him. And I'm in a 30 year bad marriage with a man who doesn't even say hello or goodbye. And I'm not well, so I'm just looking for something, anything to look forward to because I thought it was going to be being a grandmother, but clearly that's been snapped for me. 
So wait, give me a pra- some practical thing, Eric, that she can do to change this entire thing. Eric says. Eric is showing me draw a circle on some paper and put you in the middle of it and then draw lines out, you know, starting at 12 o'clock. Okay. um, And write what you would like to see change. And Eric says one is is, um, you want to to love you, Eric is saying, you want to love you and feel love. And Eric says in the next one, write down how do you go about doing that. Um, And this is one of the things that your 30-year marriage is teaching you. And it is scary. Eric says he knows it's scary. He knows it's scary. But And he says, and start writing out the things how you want things different, not dependent on other people, but how you want to do it. If you want to go every Sunday and have coffee and a croissant with somebody, and I don't know why he's saying a croissant, but um, or go to have a good girlfriend relationship where you have good friends. Eric says that's a place to really start to start making good girlfriends. Well, you know, that's really interesting because raising your vibration that way, could possibly be one step toward healing the relationship with your only child. Is there any Absolutely. way if it does raise her vibration that contacting, I mean, even being brave and calling her only child uh, would come to something? And, and if so, would, would, would there be a way for Eric or her, you, Eric, or her guides to guide that conversation so it will come to something good? Eric says yes, because what's going to happen is when she raises her vibration, her vibration, her story will be different to her son. And oh. Eric suggests sending him an email first and, and doing that. But Eric says start out like doing a a wheel, he says, about how you want this different. Yeah. What, what yeah. it is you do want. What it is you do want. Not and that, any email should be totally non-judgmental, not focused on the past, I think, anyway. Correct. Focus on the future. I'm your mother. I love you. I'm your mother. I love you. Correct. Is there Correct. anything I can do for you? All right. Thanks, Lisa. Lisa. I Eric want you to... he's connected to you, though, uh, Lisa. He's he's connected to you, oh. your son. So it's, that's not like he's total done over with nothing. Oh. Thank you for that. Thank you for that very much. All right, you, you keep care, uh, keep calling us. I want to hear more. Oh my goodness! All right, uh, we have somebody from the five eight five area code. How you doing? I'm great. Thank you for taking my call. Hi, everybody. Oh, Hi, it's a pleasure. This is Jeannie from New York. Hi, Hi Jeannie. Would you like some of the snow? Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what? Oh. Get off. My dogs are pounding me. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm calling to see um, if you see me moving soon. Uh-oh. Mm. Yeah, I'm surrounded by a lot of negative energy, and I would love to move. Oh. Please Are you looking to, have you been looking for places to move? Yes, I have. Cause and Eric- they haven't. Eric has shown me like around March. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. Which, which that would be good because that's like kind of like your weather will kind of calm down. Oh, yes. Yes, it'll clear mm-hmm. up some. Mm-hmm. So Eric says use this time to really look at what it is that they're, whatever that energy, as you call it, the negative energy, whatever yes. it's bringing up in you. Eric says this is a good time to look at it, what it's bringing up in you. Okay. So you don't bring that with you. Oh, yes, I know what it's bringing up, a lot of anger, and I'm trying to rid myself of oh, that. Yeah, well, yeah. Eric says don't get rid of the anger. Ask yourself what the anger is. Okay. Yeah, and then well, find out what the root of it is so you can yeah. reflect and on it. Like a little new puppy or a cat. There we go okay. with the puppy. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's great. exciting. Yeah. Keep us posted as to where you move to, and I hope you I make sure that the house is big enough for one extra room for me. Uh, of course. I need to get away from our family sometime. <laughs> oh, my God. It's beautiful up here in the summer. Oh, I bet. Oh, I bet. oh my goodness. I'm oh. upstate New York, so it's I, really oh gorgeous the... up there. I love that. Yes. I love it. I love upstate New York. It is so beautiful. And New Jersey, the country, oh, gosh. All right, well, thank oh, you. Yes. So okay, I thank you. Cat skills. Bye-bye. Be yeah. blessed. Uh, Google but, imaging uh, images coming my way very soon. I need to look this up. Oh, God. I just need to get away from concrete sometimes, you know? I know. Um, Upstate right, New York is gorgeous. Let's try 321 area code one more time. I hope she or he answers. 321 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hello, 321 area code. You're on. Please answer. Okay. All right. We'll try that. I know who it is, uh, and they need help really badly. But, okay. Uh, okay. Four. Uh, let's do the four four three area code then. Hi there. How you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. My name is Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Um, I haven't talked to Eric since this summer. Um, and I was so glad to catch you all tonight. And I just want to see if he can update me on either what he sees that I need to be doing for my greatest good or messages from angels, you know, guides, loved ones, whatever he thinks I need. Okay. Well, Eric says you don't need anything. He says you got everything already. Um, oh. So are you a, a medium, a healer or something? I I'm working on medium and healer. I've been told I'm a healer. I've been told I'm a medium, but I'm not able to understand messages yet from spirit very well. Well, Eric says, get out. do you have cards? Do you do angel cards or anything like that? I do have angel cards. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crazy about them. Maybe I need a different set. Yes, Eric says, because he says you would do well at cards. He says, and, he sh- and this is what he's showing me, he says, just start practicing, no, and don't worry about if you're right, wrong, indifferent, or whatever, because that's not what we're working on. He said, what you're working on is getting comfortable with it, and you're and learning how to trust your inner voice, your intuitiveness, because that's okay. the key to this work is trusting your intuitiveness. Okay. You know, one thing you wow. do is you can go to a place that sells these cards and take a pendulum. Of course, you have to. Make sure you say a, a prayer of protection, but mm-hmm. yes, or, yes or no on each deck and, and figure out which is best for you. And, and ask Eric and your guardian angel and your guides to help you choose the best one because you might just not have the proper, the the, the compatible pack, you know? Yeah, I just, I like, I mean, I'm glad I got them, but I just don't feel led to them. I felt like it was a crutch, like I didn't, shouldn't be using them. Eric says, oh, I Eric says no. He, uh, people use stuff all the time. So, okay. and Eric says this is going to help you with your confidence. He says this is really okay. going to help you because it's vis- He says you're very visual, and it's yeah. going to help you with that. Okay. So do you, I see any timeline for me as far as when these things are going to, like when I'll start doing this as a job, say, instead of what I'm doing now. When you start trusting your intuitiveness, that's the key. Okay. It really is, Suzanne. It really is. And, and I know. I, I know. It's, it's about trusting. It is. It's so hard. Uh-huh. Because I want to help people so badly. You know, like I'm I'm all in it for helping people. Because I know the joy I got when when I got it, you know, I'm, I got to be able to talk to my dad through a medium after he passed. Yeah. I know what kind of joy that is. So. You'll get there. What about an automatic writing, um, Eric? Would 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 that be kind of a lead in, or what do you think? Eric says yes, but she's kind of not really believing that that's what happened. So Eric says cards are usually kind of an easy way, but he's also saying, "Mom, that was a good suggestion about the pendulum, because that's also very visual for her." Okay. So she could, yeah, he, that's what he's saying. 
All right. All right. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna get a new deck tonight. Thank you. Have fun. Yay! We we'll use the pendulum. Okay. Cool. I want to hear back from her and see what's going on. Um, all right, I'm going to try the three, one, two, Erica, one more time, because I, I know this is one person that's in a little bit of a distress. So, um, three, one, two, or three, two, one. Three, two, one. Sorry about that. Hey, how you doing? Three, two, one, Erica, are you there? Yeah, I can hear us. Oh my yeah. God, there you tried to get in touch. We have uh, muted you several times. Thank God you are here. Hey, sweetie, how, uh, what's your first name? How, how can we help you? Hello? Yes. Can you hear Hi. us? Hi. I'm Jessica from Florida. Hi, Jessica. Hi, sweetie. How can we yeah, help I you, darling? Um, I just want to, you know, ask a question. Oh. Sure. Of course. I just want to know why, like, you know, why he would have done anything like that. Who? My boyfriend. What's his first name, baby? Johnny. Donnie, where's he from? Um, he's from Cocoa, Florida. Cocoa, Florida. Eric, can you go get Donnie? Or what's his first initial of his last name? Um, W. Donnie W. Cocoa, Florida. Eric, can you go get him, sweetie? Yeah, he transitioned himself over, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Eric is saying pain. Pain. And um, not knowing where to get rid of it. Now, uh, why is Jessica being blamed for this? Because Eric says... Or the father. Eric says because they... Whenever something, any time there's a tragedy, they have they people want to blame somebody because they want because it, it makes them feel better instead of like, well, it just happened, you know, um, this is why it happened. And Eric says, in this situation. Um, there's a lot of people that don't want to look at their own selves as a part of the the the, the you know part of it. Mm. Um, Eric Eric is telling me there was there's always been um, there's always been some form of abuse around Donnie mm. from a young age. And um, did he do drugs too, Jessica? Yes. Yeah. Because I also feel like it was a party at home type stuff to do and when I say that I feel like it was uh, he learned it from home yeah so who if any had any contributing factor to his death aside Donnie um nobody no 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 no. I, I, I want Eric to say I'm sorry or Donnie to say I'm sorry I'm sorry did this is this recent that Donnie transitioned? Yeah, yeah, because that's what I get from Eric. It's recent. It's like Eric speaking for him, like he's like the guy's got laryngitis or something, can't talk loud, so Eric's speaking for me. For him, mm. Eric says ultimately, it's our. It was it's us. But he says, what you're asking, though, he says, the dynamics of the family, the growing up, the dynamics of the family. It's and from what it. Eric is telling me is that Jessica tried to love him back to being okay. Ooh. And it it just, it's not that it wasn't enough. It's it's just that, you know, it's like trying to put a Band-Aid on a 10-inch deep cut. If the Band-Aid's not enough. So you're saying that Jessica was trying to heal the wounds from his childhood? Yeah, trying to get him to 
to be okay. And um, because he has, um, from what Eric has shown me, you know, he really had a a sweet heart, you know, a kind heart. Um, Yeah. A love, you know, he was a loving person. He wasn't what people tried to say he was. But now that he's transitioned over, now let's put all the blame on everybody else, you know, the people like who we can attach it to so that we can feel better. Mm. And people do that all the time. You know, somebody goes in the hospital and has surgery and they've had a bad heart to begin with and they have surgery and they have a heart attack and who do they blame? Eric says they blame the doctor. If the doctor would have just done this, what they don't realize is that it's not the doctor. It's everything that led up to that point, you know. And uh, the doctor was just trying to prolong things. And Eric says this is what Jessica was trying to do. Is and there I, any... I... Oh, good. Eric is telling me that... Um, There's going to be things brought into Jessica's life as because of this that are going to end up being really big blessings for her. And um, Jessica, take take notes on everything that's going on. Everything, Eric says, take notes on everything. And um, because um, Donnie wants you to be his voice. And I just see Eric is showing me a book. So keep your notes because I feel like this is something that you're going to put in. I don't know if you like to write now, Jessica, but um, Eric and both Donnie are telling me you're a beautiful writer. So, Wow. Okay, so um, does Donnie have any messages for her? And also, I want to know if there's a, if this was a spiritual contract, and if so, what, who, and what were we supposed to, were people supposed to learn? Eric says no, that wasn't the plan for when they were all sitting up there on the other side, saying, "Okay, Donnie, when you incarnate here, this is what's going to end up happening." That wasn't yeah. the plan, but it. I feel like he's. Attempted this before Has he Jessica I'm not sure I feel like he's attempted it before And um from, Like this wasn't the first time Or definitely not the first thought so Was it an uh, accident an Overdose or a, a purposeful Overdose Or an overdose at all I'm sorry It was an, I think it was an overdose right Jessica Yeah it was an accident was mm-hmm. it an accident or on purpose? Accident. Um, Eric? Well, Eric, says, Eric says, you know, Eric says, yes, she can list it as an accident, but he knew he was taking over his limit. No. Okay. So, yeah. So any messages for Jessica before we go on, go on to the next caller? Stay to what you know is the truth. And this is why it's so important you write down everything that's going on. Yeah. Any way to heal family relationships? Not today, Eric says, not today. Down the road, maybe, but that takes... Um, that's going to take some everybody looking in the mirror. Mm. And that's not going to, you know, and some people don't want to look in the mirror, you know. I mean, shit, it's hard for me sometimes. So. Yeah, the last but, 10 years I haven't been eager about that too, so I know. But Eric says, but don't let that stand in your way, Jessica. No, Jessica. This is the, the reason why it, and it, it unfolded this way because it's like another plan came into place. And Jessica, there's more, there's good coming from this. Allow yourself to be where you are, but don't stay in that. And if you get stuck in a rut where you just can't get up, reach out for help. And yeah. not to the people who are not equipped to help you. 
Yeah, we know who this, those people are. All right, Jessica, you take care and call us back, all right, darling? Oh, okay. Big um, hugs, Jessica. Yeah. Seven, eight, I mean, sorry, 732 area code. What's up? How you doing? Hello, this is Melissa from New Jersey. Hi, Hi Melissa. Melissa. What's up? What you got for us? Thank you, so, thank you so much for taking my call. I'm it's trying to heal myself. I'm trying to heal myself, and I have a few addictions that are not not the normal addictions, but they're they're definitely things that I haven't been able to kick in a, in a really all all my years. And I was just wondering, did I do I have some kind of past life that's breathing that's bleeding into this one that has caused these things, or am I just the cause of it? And what a great is question! There any- Wow, that's a great question. So is what she's going through now triggered by a past life, Eric? Well, is one of them hair pulling? No. I don't know why Eric has shown me something with the fingers in the hair. Okay. Um, Eric says, um, he says, yes, yeah, some of it is, he says, Yes, some of it is bleed through. It's not. It's not like um, Melissa. You said, okay, I'm going to do these things because I feel like one of them started at a very, very young age. And um, but Eric says it's a, it's about the. It's like if everything is in front of you, then you feel safe, and that falls into Eric. To show me how um, keeping things in order and keeping things at your fingertips is what he's showing me. So, um, and Eric says this is when you're getting into those places, not to shame yourself or anything, but remind yourself everything is okay. Was there hair because pulling in another life for her, Eric? I want to, you know, because uh, Eric has shown me like the hair pulling in that, um, like. Just little fingers well, maybe with the she's hair. Her hair out in frustration of what's going on, or maybe she did have triggered you know, uh, in another life. You know what? I want to be able to help others too, and that's the whole purpose of sharing all this stuff. So one is shoplifting, which, like Eric said, yeah, it happened from just from a very early age, okay. and the other is. And the other, I feel like because my relationship with my husband has been so poor, I'm always looking for, I guess I have low self-esteem, so I have always been soft on people making advances because I don't really think of myself as pretty or attractive. So when people are coming on to me, I feel like, um, you know, I'm I'm looking for uh, comfort. But I really should be working harder on my marriage and not looking outside for that. So these two things have really been these problems for me for these last couple of years, and I just want to heal and be better and 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 shake it, you know, and not be yeah. Well, no, I, the- I I shoplifted when I was very very young. So I know I stole a, a little copper pin because my parents made me take it back. I was totally ashamed. But so I know, but but sometimes that is a, a feeling for, for soothing. And what you're talking about, like, uh, you know, accepting advances from uh, men who make you feel beautiful, even though you already are, uh, that's very soothing too. And, you know, unfortunately, if your husband cannot imbue those feelings in you, you you got to know that you can't get that from the outside, that you are lovable on your own. Dude, you are divine, okay? You are whole and part of God. But I don't want to be divine in hell. <laughs> yeah, you, you, are, you are love, okay? So, so you know, please, I mean, the, the first step is to love yourself. But go ahead, Eric. I don't know what I'm talking about. Go Eric ahead. says, well, and Eric is showing me, it's like he's showing me it's that in the fingers. He says it's in the fingers. 
And he keeps, that's what he keeps showing me, something about the fingers. And, um, and, about, and, Eric says, and Eric says part of this is, is he sh- I, I don't, and I'm asking, he keeps showing me in the fingers, though, and maybe that also relates to um, shopping for free, you know, and maybe that's why yeah. he keeps showing me the fingers. But Eric is saying um, to nurture, to love yourself, you know, that's such a, a, a large statement, but he says how you can start doing that is making sure every day you do, do you work outside of the home? No, I take care of my, no, I take care of my father-in-law, so I'm kind of jailed. Okay, he can't so do- Eric says, Eric says every morning, this is why he's saying this, because he's saying every morning you get up, take a shower or a bath, whatever you prefer to take, you put on clothes as if you were going to go out to the store, the grocery store or whatever, if you wear makeup, put on some makeup to make you feel better, to get going. And then you also, Eric says, set aside some time for you and in some form of meditation music or music or, or if you can sit in quiet, do that. Do that before you start any of your day with your father-in-law. I know because what you're thinking. She's thinking that no, I don't have time for it myself. Yes, she do. I have, I have yes, responsibility to my father-in-law, and you no. can't do that. I, I mean, I'm in the same situation. I totally understand that. Eric, says yeah, Eric, also, Eric, Eric also said that getting a puppy was going to be a great thing. <laughs> that's, that's been really tough. <laughs> well, oh my if God. you get up, if you get up at, if your day starts at six a.m., then get up at five a.m. No, don't say that. That's to horrible. To start your day, to get to put you Ugh. first. I'm telling you, once you start doing it, you will be so happy. Well, my day this? don't have to really start till seven, but I get up at five. Yeah, not me. But, but well, what, about, what about the scalar energy? What about scalar energy? The um, boost in self love. That would definitely help. People. That would definitely help. Eric said that would definitely help. But he's also saying. If you could go get massages of some sort, because what you're missing is that nurturing. And so what you do is you're, you're finding the ways that you learned at a very early age on how to nurture you. Yeah. You deserve it, so girl. Was, was, were those bleed-throughs from a past life, or is it something I've just developed in this one? No, it, what it is is, is you're in... Eric has shown me in a few of your past lives and recent ones um, is about the one of the ones that's really influences this life is that it's like you were like kicked out of the house from and you had to live by yourself. It's like you were like a an outcast of the family, you know, they had brown hair and everybody had blonde hair or something. It's like mm-hmm. you were an outcast and you were, you had to learn how to love you in spite of how everybody else is. And this is kind of what's happening within your household. Even though you're not kicked out, everybody else of is of importance but you. Do you cook dinner every night too? Most of the time. I do Eric a lot of stop. stuff. Eric says stop. When you're the housewife and your husband works outside, that's not as easily said and done. I mean, he tr- he tries to help out, but really, it, it's it's all it's all on me. Well, maybe you need to reevaluate that relationship. I don't know. Eric says it's not it's working outside of the home doesn't. Stop you from having some help inside the home, right? I mean, come on. I mean, really, you do shit. And Eric says, okay, take one that, night a week. That unfortunately one- does not get a paycheck. Okay, maybe, but still, it's a lot of work. It's much harder to be a stay-at-home um, a woman than it is to, you know, work and do it. You know, nine to five and have fun at the water cooler and all that stuff. Screw that. 
All right. So anyway, just yeah. So take care of yourself. Consider the boost in self love uh, and let us get her um, deal. Uh, there's, there's a lot. Thank you. Lot. Video, um, you, I mean, YouTube's on a, the Atlanta Skater channel that people talk about how it works. So, uh, love yourself because, man, you are so worthy of love, man. You are. All of you guys are. I love you all so much. Uh, 773 Area Code. What's up? How you doing? Hey, Lisa. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? I'm good. Well, I'm, I'm okay from, 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 from the teeth, from the chin below. The teeth, not the <laughs> mouth. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Hi, Denise. Hi, Eric. Hi. Who is it? Teresa from Chicago. Teresa. Okay. Yeah, we spoke before. Um, look, I have a question um, about my sleeping. I wake up at two, three, four, five, six in the morning. I don't know why I keep waking up. Is my angels trying to send me a message or my higher self, or is it because I'm worrying about what's me going on with the big V? I don't say the word. I just, I mean, I don't say the name. I just say V. Eric says it's some of that. And then also, too, there's, um, um, when you, when you wake up on one of those times and you start thinking, Eric says that would be a good time to like, just go, what is it that I'm, what is it that I'm hearing? Um, Mm. Because there are messages coming in for you, but then there's another that, because you are real stressed out. And so Eric says... Well, yes, yes, I am. I can feel it so strong. But I can yeah. hear uh, someone trying to talk to me. I mean, not talk, but I can feel yes. a message, but I don't So I Eric says, it. put a little notepad by your bed and just write down what you think they're saying or something. And it doesn't well, matter... Well, Eric, what are they saying? Eric, cut to the chase. What messages are they sending her? Name Eric one. Says, what, what Eric says, what I'm hearing is somebody's wanting you to know they're okay. Does that make sense? They're okay. They're okay. Does that make sense? Oh, I don't know. My, my granddaughter passed in October, so okay. it was okay. she's oh, yeah, yeah, 19. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I, I feel she okay. I, I, I don't yeah. Know. They just don't know they're okay. Okay, I don't know. Which is a few of Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, wow. What's your what's okay. your first name? Uh, my granddaughter Danielle. Yeah. Is it Danielle that's uh, giving that message, uh, Eric and Denise? Eric says, you know, um, Eric says yes, and um, you know, um, oh. Eric says yes. She wants you to know that she's okay. But I feel like if you, when you get get that, when you feel like there's something to write down, what's going on and stuff. And um and Eric says you don't need to worry about the big V. You're gonna be fine. Yeah, that's what's been on my mind too. So I've been learning uh oh yeah, thank you, Eric. He already knows. Thank you. Well I'm I was just thinking I wonder why my granddaughter think uh, that I was worrying about her because I can feel she's fine. I'm trying yeah. to keep my daughter up. <laughs> yeah. It's not that she worries, she just wants you to know. And oh, I guess, thank and Eric you. says, so that oh, way. Thank you. Uh, I say thank you. <laughs> she hears you. Yes. She, and she comes to me with the color red, but then she has like a golden energy around her. But she's showing me well, red. Wow. I know what she's doing. Red is her favorite. You know, uh, that's what, yeah, red, red and white is her favorite. She loves red. So I know oh. what she's doing. Yeah, that's her favorite okay. color. She came to me. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Danielle. I love you so much. That's she wonderful validation. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful validation. Oh, all right, so we're going to go to the 702 area code. Hello. Hi. Hi there. What's up? Hey, this is Jim from Las Vegas. How are you guys doing? Jim. Yeah. Hi, Jim. Hey. Hi. I'm fine. I miss you. What's going on? Yeah, I miss you guys too. Hey, I have a question. Uh, in the wee hours of Christmas morning, like around 2 or 3 a.m., I had this weird shadow thing um, come over me, and um, I was 
It, it didn't really scare me. It was annoying, and it only mm-hmm. lasted a few seconds, and then went away. I was just wondering, you know, could Eric tell me what that was? Well, let me ask you this. Did you do anything divination-wise, like tarot cards or um, dowsing rods, pendulum, anything like that right before? No, I haven't done that um, since the last time we talked, which is like a month ago. Oh, all right. So because when I did that, that happened to me, and it was freaking scary. But go ahead. What was that, Eric? Was it Nebuchadnezzar? Was it Archangel Metatron? Sometimes it looks like a black figure. I mean, it could be different things. What is it? Well, what I got right away when, um, when Jim was talking, and Eric had me write down higher self. So, um, and I'm asking Aaron, Eric, is that his, and Eric says yes, because are you questioning some of the stuff that you do or something, Jim? Um, well, I've been studying this stuff since I was like 15 years old. Wow. Are you, the, getting, are you the, getting ready doubts. to jump off into another arena with it, like a deeper level of it? Or yeah, maybe I've been trying should. to do that for a while. I mean... Mm-hmm. I mean, like we all do, I go go through these periods of doubt. Yeah. That's just normal, but and then that's that cool. usually precedes a big growth spurt. So. Yes. You no. Know. Eric has shown me that's your higher self, and what it is, it's like you're supported. You're supported. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Eric so, also says you've done a really good job about taming your ego. Oh. Yeah, I, was, I noticed that after I, I had the after Lisa did the work on me, which was uh, first week in November. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of things have calmed down. I stopped worrying about stuff that I can't do anything about because I'm an empath and I've always had a problem dealing with that. Mm-hmm. So now it's it's beginning to calm down, and now that I spent all this time alone, I've gotten a better hold on my ego and emotions well, overall. I am, so, That's so, I am cool. so proud of you. That is so rare and so amazing. Oh, my gosh. Now, can you give lessons to my husband, please, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Denise knows him. Denise knows him. My brother knows him. Yeah. He's like, he was a Viking in another past life. Oh, I was like, you go away back. Oh yeah. Lord of mercy! Okay, so give Eric. Can you give him some uh, the next practical step to jump off the diving board, please? Next level. Well, Eric says if it sounds real weird, the next step, you know, you're in the right place because he says the deeper you go, the more strange it seems. Because it's it's like, you know, we start out, you know, with this church stuff or whatever or whatever yeah. we start out with. And, and then as we get going further and further into this, you know, it just gets more wilder than than ever, you know. And um, so if it's yeah, that's real, true because I started out in the Southern Baptist Church. Oh yeah. I'm from Oklahoma. Yeah, I'm from Oklahoma. So, you yeah. know, by the time I was 12 and I figured out that I'm gay, you know, that whole scenario went away, and that's when I started oh, Thank God. researching like everything I can get my hands on, and I've been doing it ever since. But you know, otherwise, I wouldn't be talking, how guys. People, <laughs> how many people come to the realization uh, under the guys uh, under the umbrella of the church that they're gay? But don't have the courage to do what you're doing. Oh, I know. So yeah, I'm no. wondering, you know what? I know you know, uh, Denise. But is there some Eric? Is there some place for him to help people that are also gay um, to 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 come out of so, uh, the the religion, the organized religion thing? Well, Eric says people just are going. People are just drawn to him. He says, "Mom, it's it's not that it's it's um, it's the the energy that he has that people are going to be drawn to, and then he's going to start noticing that 
the people that are drawn to him that are gay or trans or bi or whatever. And I'm going to tell you, Jim, I know for me, I get a lot of clients who are gay, bi, or their or their kids are trans or something like that, and I'm gay, and they don't know that because I don't look like your stereotypical person. That is, or and I also get a lot of people who are either adoptees or they have adopted, and I've adopted, you know, a child. Eric says right. it's, they they will just come to you, but Eric says what the people that are needing what he has, which is. He, Eric says it's just such a sweetness of love that he just um, emits from himself. And, and that's what's going on because Eric says, and then those people will take that somewhere and you don't know who all they're touching and stuff. Well, I'm just, yeah. I'm just wondering if Jim is here on this earth to help people like him get out of the clutches of organized religion and be free and, and and love themselves and understand that love is love is love. Maybe he can write a book. Maybe he can do a documentary. I don't know. I mean, is there something there for Jim? It, it, well, what Eric, you have, you, have you tried, have you been thinking about doing a YouTube channel? Uh, no, I'm still working on a book that I started years ago, but the book has, uh, me basically coming out in uh, high school to a friend of mine <clears throat> and, you know, kind of touches on the whole gay thing while you're still a teenager oh my in gosh, the 70s yeah. in Oklahoma. And it's just like, you know, this this book had, for me has been therapy and I'm almost done with it, you know, and that's gonna, it's going to wow. be out pretty soon. Well, Eric says that is going to prompt you to have a YouTube because, you know, like a Hey, I mean, or whatever. Okay, get in touch with me. I, I can maybe hook you up with my literary agent because this is a story that probably needs to be told. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a minister at the Unity Church in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I'm sure she doesn't mind me out in her because she wrote a book about her journey coming out and all this other stuff, and it was a fascinating book. And it's What's called, the name of the um, why, do, why do we die eight times or eight different times or something? But I'm telling you, her church in St. Petersburg got a huge congregation and how I know about because she came to the one here in Unity and talked. Mm. Mm. And and it's um, but Eric says, yeah, the books, because we want to read these books. And and even though things are a little bit more out and about, per se, there's still a lot of that resistance yeah oh god yes it's yeah, there's still a lot of out. people i mean i just turned 61 and i guarantee you there's still a lot of people that are my age and older who are still having problems with this simply because yeah. of the way we were raised and the way we were treated and yeah. you know what i'm talking about i'm not preaching to the choir here yeah but um you know i hope that i hope this book does well and in, in the fact that people you know, understand that they're not alone and that there's a whole lot of millions and millions of people who go through the same thing that they're going through. Oh, of course. But it's not yeah. only it's yeah. not only only gays that are trying to get out from under the the little contract. It's also everybody who's trying to get out of that contract. So I think yours is sort of to be heard, and, and you know, get in touch with me, um, Alisa at AtlantisScalar.com, and you know, send me your manuscript when it's done, and I'll hook you up with my. I mean, I can't promise anything, but my wonderful literary agent, okay? Okay, I will. <clears throat> and believe it or not, since we're talking about this, I go off on organized religion in this book big time on the Baptists and the Catholics, and it's. Yeah. Oh my They're God! There's so it, but, you know. much. Well, it's okay. There's good yeah. behind organized religion, but let me tell you, there's a lot of violence and death that are at the hands of organized religion. I can say this because my a great uncle was Cardinal of Spain. Okay. Anyway, he went on missionary work in Africa, got eaten up by cannibals. True story. Okay. Oh wow. So yeah, I know about. Wow. You know, I, I know about organized religion. I'm deep into it, uh, and it's foibles and it's shrinks. 
All right. I love you guys. Paul, yeah. check out Denise Ramon. Oh, wow, totally. And uh, check out AtlantaScaler.com, JamlingEric.com. Check out Atlanta Scaler YouTube channel. And I don't know, just check out everything, whatever. Just, just do it. I love you guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I love you all. Oh, Bye. Oh, Bye. I love you, Eric. And I love you. He loves you, Denise. Mama. He loves you, he says. Oh, visit me, baby. I love you. He will. <laughs> <laughs>